Imagine visuals similar to this, but from a device no larger than a Roku box. What you can't? Well, Microsoft can, and they plan to bring it to you through next generation APU technology. Now we're going to get into this, but first things first, it is the holidays, and I want to wish all of you a great one. Keep in mind that because it is the holiday, we will not have RDX podcast tomorrow, but we will be back next week. Hang in there. Let's get into the topic at hand. We have some leaks on AMD's next generation Picasso APU that is likely to be used in one of the many Xbox 2 SKUs in 2020. For those of you that do not know, Xbox is of course rumored to be releasing several different versions of Xbox platforms in 2020, two traditionally powered home consoles along with a streaming box as well. This streaming box is the one we will be focusing on today. Now all of this information comes from an alleged insider and has been reported on as such. Cloud-focused streaming Xbox may be powered by semi-custom Picasso APU. These reports are actually pretty interesting and go on to say a few different things. They start by saying we have received new information on what chip will power this new affordable game console. They go on to say that as you may have read, these new Picasso APUs have essentially already been linked to being used in new Surface laptops. However, according to the leaker, Microsoft is really interested in using Picasso APUs in their streaming version of the Xbox 2. Now, if you've kept up with this channel, you know that this chip is important because it will power the low latency tasks when streaming. Yes, that is the difference between Xbox 2's streaming box and many other services out there. Microsoft are aiming to give you an extremely low amount of latency when streaming on this new Xbox 2 streaming box. And they plan on doing that by running ultra low latency tasks such as player movement and perhaps AI, things like that, on the local processor of the streaming box, while allowing more static objects to use internet bandwidth to stream into the scene. I call this hardware interlacing, fusing both streaming from their Azure servers and the local calculations of the Ryzen APU on the streaming box. It is indeed a hybrid method putting the fast response time actions on local hardware and streaming everything else in through your internet. And as a result, it may even cut down on bandwidth, which is also a major concern for a lot of consumers. But at the end of the day, really, it does sound promising. It's different from what other manufacturers have tried. Now, of course, this will be a semi-custom chip for Microsoft. It will have their custom hardware requests and adaptations for easier development and higher efficiency. One of the reasons they will go with the Picasso APU on the streaming box is because it is a little Roku-sized box, which means it will also most likely be fanless, and when that is the case, APU power draw has to be extremely low. The Picasso architecture, at least in this APU form, is said to consume around a mere 15 watts of power. That is extremely low. Not only that, but all Ryzen APUs are very cost-effective. So picture this. You go into Best Buy, Target, Walmart, anywhere where you can buy electronics. You then see an Xbox 2 streaming box on the shelf for around 100 bucks. On the back of this box, it tells you you can play Xbox console quality games and stream all of your favorite apps. You then pick up a competing device like an Apple TV or an expensive Roku box and see that these things really only do one of those things. They do not play AAA level games. Also consider the fact that when you do stream games from this Xbox 2, it is said to stream games of indicative quality to that of what you are seeing on your screen. Yes, it is possible. If you've been keeping up with Google's Project Stream, there are those out there already streaming games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey at 1080p 60 frames per second. The games look great. I've seen the footage myself. This streaming box can do the same exact thing. And more importantly, it can do these things at the same price point of some of its competing TV Roku boxes in addition to doing those same things that those TV Roku boxes do. It's actually a really good deal. Now in an ideal world you'll just be able to sign into an Xbox app on this Xbox 2 streaming box and stream any of the games that you own but in a realistic world this may not be the case. 
While the prospect of increased sales are the incentive for developers and publishers to enable this feature for absolutely free is indeed real, there may be complications. But think about that. Microsoft have said this publicly. They want to reach billions of gamers with a B. And with Project X Cloud said to only need a 4G connection to work, and this is confirmed by Microsoft, the Xbox 2 streaming box is not far behind. It may even be better. Seeing as some of the compute is done locally on the box itself. So if you are a developer or publisher, you have every single incentive to say, hey, yes, let's allow our titles to be streamed. We now have access to not only people with Xbox consoles, but people with 4G connections through both Project X Cloud and this new Xbox 2 streaming service. Let's unlock ourselves from 40 or 50 million Xbox customers to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of 4G enabled customers. That is the incentive for these developers and Microsoft to do this at no additional cost the prospect of hundreds of millions of additional customers. But at the end of the day, I suppose we will see. I figured I'd talk about this. I'm covering all of the hardware regarding the next generation Xbox. This little Picasso chip is said to be pretty capable for its power draw especially. Let me know what you guys think down below. Did you find this interesting? Let me know. I know the news is a few days old or more, but I've been getting so many DMs on Xbox Live and Twitter that I had to cover this. As I said before, this is just one of the Xbox 2 variants coming. There are a couple more. Check out my channel for more on those. If you're wondering what gameplay this is, it's Gears of War 4 running in the 60 frames per second mode on Xbox One X. Looks absolutely insane. Like I said, if you learned something today or liked the video, hit that like button. If you get a second or two, share this with a buddy. It really helps, especially with videos like this. And of course, if you are new and interested in this kind of stuff, I'll be covering all of the hardware in these consoles. Subscribe for more videos. Check out the links down below. I'm Dealer. I'm out.